Kuchuk Sia, Asla Kaladi Baltia. Greetings to you, Honorable One, listening to us here. We thank you for taking the time to listen. Now, because I'm a stranger to you, I would like to properly introduce myself. I am Tak Shablo Vai Hilbert, now an elder of the Upper Skagit tribe, the primal people, the American Indians who live along the Skagit River and its tributary. My elders tell me that we have always been there. We have always lived here, speaking our language, practicing our religion, and living our philosophy. Now, in the early 1900s, we were forbidden and restrained from speaking our language or practicing our religion. And our religion has managed to survive this and is still being very actively practiced. Our language, unfortunately, is drifting away. And it is for this reason that since 1967, I have been researching my language and culture in order to preserve as much as I possibly can. The language of the Lashutzid is also called Puget Sound Salish, or Salish. A member of this large Salish family, Lashutzid is. Now much of my research has been compiled in the books that we have created for the classes I teach at the University of Washington and have taught since 1972. Thanks to Dr. Thomas Melville Hess, a friend and very respected linguist now at the University of Victoria, we have two grammars for the language classes that I teach. These are Lushutzid I and Lushutzid II. Now Lushutzid is the anglicized spelling of Duch Lushutzid, the word our people use when speaking of our language. Now Dr. Hess has so very beautifully structured these grammars that this guides our students through all of the material to the point that when they have finished the two books, they can read and understand our literature in the language or appreciate it in English. Now because our language was an oral language up until this time, tribal historians were given the responsibility of remembering everything that was important to our people and passing this information on to the younger generations. You can see that much of our important information was lost because we didn't have a written language to preserve it. Now we had to develop an alphabet for working with our language and this was developed from the International Phonetic Writing System and it has 42 characters or symbols where the English language has 26. Now linguists can look at this chart of the language, the alphabet, and reproduce those sounds, but a student needs the help of a teacher in the classroom. Now, for instance, a linguist could see this word and know that it says ko kwa, to drink, but a student needs to be able to watch my mouth to say ko kwa, ko kwa. And then a linguist can see that this word says stoob, the word for man. A student needs to watch my mouth. Stoob, stoob. Now Dr. Hess has also compiled a 700 page dictionary for us to preserve some of our vocabulary. Now my research has generated enough new material to create still another volume of the dictionary. Now we are fortunate that so much of our language has been preserved in this manner and students find it very exciting 
to be able to study the language of the primal people, the first people. This had to be a very sophisticated language to have so much vocabulary preserved for it. Now this, this vocabulary that we have written about in the textbooks doesn't include some of the material that I lecture about in the classroom, things that I don't have written in any of the books, but have written in here and in here. I have been fortunate enough to have a son who is an artist, Chadas Qaydab, Ron Hilbert Coy, who has uh, illustrated my books for me. And I have done a little book of vignettes called Ways of the Lashutzid. And uh, he has done illustrations for me as I write about these things. One is about Slahau, the bone game that our people play. And in addition to the ways of the Lashutzid, as our students study the literature that I have written in English translation in a book called Habu. Habu is a word that the storyteller asks his audience to say when he's telling them the story. They are to say, Habu, Habu, I'm interested in what you're saying. I like your story. I'm awake. Habu, this is the, the literature of our people, which has been very neglected up until the present time. Now, all of our beautiful storytellers can be heard and studied. The stories of the Lushutsid people can be studied both in English and in Lushutsid. Now, as students learn the language, I feel it's important for them to also know about the artifacts that were important to our people. For instance, the cedar root basket here was a very important part of the culture. It was so tightly woven that our people could cook their food in it by dropping hot rocks into water and then putting their food in and continuing to put hot rocks in until the food was cooked. And this is an example of the kind of clothing we used, pounded cedar bark. We used this because it shed water and it was replaceable. We used also skin clothing for cold weather. Now this drum was used in the practice of our religion. This is a tasadi. These deer hoof rattles were also used in our religion. Now these things are models of our transportation. This is a river canoe, a tlite. I have seen a, a picture of people sitting in this canoe, and there are 11 people, women and children. So 11 people could ride in a tlite, a river canoe. Now this is a, an aotchs, a seagoing family canoe. Now when this canoe was going long distances, they would have a sail in the center of it and whole families could travel in this canoe. They could also build a fire in there and cook their meals as they traveled. Now this is all about the artifacts of our people. I have a feeling that it's important for students to feel these things, to touch them, to hold them. And then we discuss how the basket maker had to go out and find the material for her basket or what a man had to do to create this drum that he uses for his religion. And how did, how did a, an elder carve a canoe without any book learning? How did he do that? My dad was a canoe builder, and he knew exactly how to form that canoe to travel on the Skagit River. And I always felt very safe any time I traveled with him. I never have been in an a, 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 the seagoing canoe because I wasn't raised on the salt water. Now in order for you to have some idea of how students learn Lushutsi in the classroom, I will give you a little demonstration. The students will be identifying 
animals that are familiar to the, to the Lachutzid culture. We will begin by discussing this. Stabawa tia sokwa. Stabawa tia. Spots to eat. Spots to eat. That's a bear. Toby. Me man u tia spots. Me man u. Huila me man hake ti il. It's not small, it's large. Hik tata cho bih u. Hik tata cho bih u. E tata cho bih ti il. It's a large animal. E tal. Rebecca. Sasad u ti spots. Sasad u ti spots. E khat sasad ti ith biatsa ti spots. The bear meat is good food. Pam, who idi gwat si Rebecca? Who idi gwat si Rebecca? Utsut si Rebecca. Ha sathlid ti ith biats a qui spots. Rebecca said that bear meat is good food. Ba ilid? Rebecca said that bear meat is good food. Tal u. Tal u. Huila hui gwats hud. Maybe I haven't eaten any yet.